what's up everybody welcome back to exotic as logic again and many of you have been asking me question and i thought it's high time that i make the video on this topic all right so today's topic is why to memorize shlokas how to memorize and how to study them how to learn them yes it's not about mugging but uh, how to how to speak shlokas like yes ya deva para bhakti re yatha deva tatha guru next time <laughs> All right so if you're new to the channel and if you have yet not subscribed then please subscribe and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and also please check out the Vedic Renaissance t-shirts in the description all right and before i begin i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him in the shlokas all right so now what uh what are the shlokas basically shlokas are we all know what shlokas are right shlokas are that which give us information they are written in the scriptures the kind of sutras in short forms so uh it's very important that we understand the shlokas but apart from the understanding it is important that we also uh learn a few shlokas we may not, we don't have to learn all the shlokas but especially it's good if we can learn some shlokas Be- why i'm saying because shloka my guru used to say shlokas are like missiles so whenever there is something happening in your life immediately a shloka should pop to your head pertaining to that incidents which happens in your life so for example if you have uh, if you have a problem with happiness yes suppose you're feeling that you're not happy due to some reason then which shloka should you uh, think of yes let's recite from the gita itself so this is the shloka which i recite when i am feeling i am not happy due to some reason brahma bhuta prasanna atma na so chati na kankshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu madbhaktim labhate param so now whenever i feel distress whenever i feel that there's some this some problem kuch to garbar hai then i always remember this shloka yes now how to read the shlokas so first of all we should read the sanskrit verse minimum 3 times yes that is what my guru used to say that you should read it 3 times minimum you should read it 100 times ideally but if there's no time at least you can read it 3 times all right and then you should read uh, the word by word translation so for example this shloka if i put the word by word translation we can find brahma bhuta being one with the absolute prasanna atma fully joyful na never sochati laments na never kankshati desires sama equally disposed sarveshu to all bhuteshu living entities mad bhaktim my devotional service labhate gains param transcendental so then we understand how the flow of the shloka is happening if we go word by word otherwise uh, we will never be able to learn uh, we will just mug up the shlokas yes? so next time when you uh, read shlokas it is good if we can read word by word okay and then we read the translation so what the translation for this shloka one who is transcendent one who is thus transcendentally situated at once realize this the supreme brahman and f- becomes fully joyful he never laments or desires to have anything he is equally disposed towards every living entity in that state he shall attain pure devotional service unto me all right so then there is the purport which is the explanation so i will not go to the purport now but the point here is we need to uh, read shlokas first the sanskrit three times and then word by word translation and then the complete translation and then the purport all right this is how we uh, read the shlokas and it is good if we can uh, rhyme the shlokas sometimes okay so for example let me see uh, how how many rhymings i can do for this ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्नात्मा न सोचति न कांक्षति समा सर्वेशु भूतेशु मद्भक्तिं लभते पराम 
so this is one uh, rhyming there is another rhyming you can do brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kankshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labhate param whichever works take it <laughs> and you can come up with your own uh, this own rhymes also yes if you are very creative if you are a great artist if you are very if you are a very great singer you can come up with your own styles also so this is purely individual it's very individualistic and you don't necessarily have to follow any particular pattern but generally my gurus used to recite it like this so that is why i, I am reciting like this then but now for example if you recite the brahma samhita then the rhymes will completely change venum konanta maravin dadalaya taksham barhavatam samasitam budha sundarangam lakshmi sahastra sata sambrama sevyamanam goloka eva <laughs> i can go on and on with the brahma samhita for long but uh, <laughs> due to the short interest of time in this video i will not go much into the brahma samhita so now you see so different kinds of rhymes you can come up with so these are two two three rhymes which i have given you and uh, if you are uh, if you are listening to the vishnu sasam that will have a different rhyme all right so uh, depending on the uh, number of words which are there yes number of syllables the rhymes will vary so for example these two rhymes which i uh, used earlier in this video most of the shlokas in bhagavad gita you, you can you can cover most of the shlokas yes so for example uh, the there is another shloka above so that shloka is asakta buddhi sarvatra jitatma vigata spriha naishkarmya siddhim pranam sanyase digachati all right so this you can try to <laughs> rhyme yourself so uh, most of the shlokas will uh, in the bhagavad gita i am saying you can uh, rhyme through this yes and in the end of the bhagavad gita the entire conclusion which is given which is the summary so what is that uh, verse we all know that right yes do you know that it is there in the 17th chapter what is that verse type it in the comments yes summary of the bhagavad gita what 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 lord krishna actually wants to say yes 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 sarva dharman parityaja mame kam sharanam raja aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshayami ma suchaha so that that verse tells that sarva dharman parityaja abandon all varieties of religion <laughs> and surrender unto me mam ekam only me lord krishna is telling surrender unto me aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshay shami ma sucha i will deliver you from all sinful reactions do not fear so that is the conclusion of the bhagavad gita so now when you come to shrimad bhagavatam then these these rhymes may not work yes so for example there are different shlokas the lengths may vary there so lord shiva says the famous verse in the shrimad bhagavatam to his wife parvati when that vritrasur's pastime is going on narayana para sarve nakutaschana vibhyati swarga pavarga narkeshu api tulyarthi darshinaha so uh, this is how uh, you can rhyme so these are some examples which i am giving all right and then apart from this uh, we might think that uh, why why should we learn the shlokas yes by heart so the reason is very simple it is not good to speak something of our own should i repeat it is not good to speak things from our own because our own mind can have many concoct concocted things which actually are not true yes so if you go to youtube especially or if you go to uh, google you will find so much content in the internet about spirituality about religion about god and most of the content has no scriptural basis people are just cooking up their own things and they are simply saying yes so if we need to safeguard ourselves from all this uh, unnecessary information information overload that is there in youtube especially in youtube i am saying forget about google and all this that is always there but especially in youtube then it is very important that we guard ourselves by proper scriptural basis otherwise we can have more misinformation than information and then what happens we 
get confused oh maybe like this god is like this god is like that oh he is god she is god they are god <laughs> but when you read the scriptures you will understand lord krishna say uh, in the shrimad bhagavatam which is the uh, crest jewel of all the scriptures yes sararth chintamani it is said and shrimad bhagavatam has many 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 names it is known as the amalam puranam which is the purest of the pure puranas and there it is said ete cham sakala pumsam krishnastu bhagavan swayam it is said that lord krishna is the supreme personality of god ete cham sakala pumsam there are different um, kalas and ams, amshas of lord vishnu yes what's the difference between kalas and amshas that i will explain some other time but these are the scriptural uh, references yes and lord shiva also says in the vishnu sasanam where he says shri ram ram rame te rame rame mano rame sahasranam tatulyam ram nama varanane he says that to again to his wife <laughs> goddess parvati that three names uh, see thousand names of vishnu is equal to one name of ram and there are other uh, instances in the scriptures where it is said that three names of ram is equal to one name of krishna all right so literally if you have chanted the name of krishna once you have chanted the vishnu sahasra naam three times so uh, to get this kind of a clarity in the scriptures it is very important that we read the scriptures thoroughly diligently and precisely yes and it is very important that we also make notes yes 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 we have to make notes otherwise it doesn't work <laughs> so for example how do we read this we we have found one verse pertaining to one topic yes so for example this verse says that oh if you are not uh, if you are not happy why, why you are not happy because you are either doing two things you are hankering or lamenting sochati kankshati this you are doing hankering oh i want this girlfriend i want this boyfriend i want this job i want that job <laughs> i want a million dollars i want a billion dollars yes that's hankering lamentation oh i lost her my girlfriend ditched me my boyfriend ditched me my boss fired me yes hankering is wanting to get something from the future and lamenting is crying for the things which you have lost in the past so whenever we are doing this either we are in the past or we are in the future but when we are not in the present then we cannot practice spirituality it's not possible that's what lord krishna says in this verse so then when you read the shrimad bhagavatam yes there is another shloka which is similar to this where it is said prakashante mahatmana yes mahatmanas mahatmas are always focused yes in uh, spirituality so if you want to be a mahatma then we have to focus in our spiritual practices so then when we find a verse in the shrimad bhagavatam and we find another verse in the gita then when we are making notes we can have we can make notes topic wise yes then we can connect this verse to that topic so what i generally used to do is i used to have my notebook and then i used to make a box yes so in one box i used to write happiness yes then the other verse uh, in in another box i used to write relationships so then i used to uh, write the num the verse number yes so for example if i make one box happiness then i will write this shloka the number of this shloka which i just uh, spoke yes then i will write that shloka prashantatma yes that shloka from the bhagavatam which i said then suppose i'm uh, going more deep into this topic yes of being happy then there's another shloka where lord krishna says i am the enjoyer controller and proprietor and the most well wishing friend of all living beings suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shantim ruchati that is the shloka where krishna says this so whenever i feel that oh i am lonely or maybe nobody is there i am all by myself or things are not working then we remember that oh krishna is telling i am the most well wishing friend of everybody so whenever uh, i become hopeless helpless miserable and then i always think of that verse and there's also another verse where lord krishna says that yoga kshemam vaham meham where lord krishna says i preserve what my devotees have and i carry what they lack which means whenever you are lacking something in your spiritual life if you are sincere 
in your prayers and your sincerity by actions if it's revealed by your actions yes then lord krishna says i will provide what they lack and i will sustain what you already have so that is why whenever we get into depression then we can read these verses so we can make another box depression there we can put all these shlokas yes so regarding uh, mahatmas there is another shloka in the gita which says mahatma nastumam partha daivim prakritim ashritam bhajanti ananya manaso gyatva bhuta dimavyayam mahatma nastumam partha oh my dear arjuna mahatmas are those daivim prakritim ashritam who takes shelter in my divine potency which is my spiritual potency gyatva bhuta dimavyayam and after that what happens mahatma nastu mam partha gyatva bhuta dimavyayam means they know that i am the cause of all causes i am the end of it all gyatva bhuta dimavyayam he comes to know about this and then he becomes very happy he becomes joyful yes <laughs> So sometimes when uh, I think that something has been taken away from me, then I always remember that verse where Krishna says, "I am the enjoyer, controller, and proprietor." Bhokta Ram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suridam Sarva Bhuta Nam Gyatva Mam Shanti Mrutchati. Yes, see, beautiful those slokas are if you rhyme it. Yes. So what you can do is I generally used to do. You can put. Uh, you can start a audio recording, and then you can recite all the seven hundred verses from the Gita. Yes, near about. <laughs> and then what you can do is, you can save it. And when you are going to your office, yes, instead of listening to Dinka Chika, Dinka Chika, Dinka Chika, <laughs> which will not give anything to us. Yes, instead of listening to garbage like news and. who who won the cricket match or is north korea going to have a war with south korea is india and pakistan going to have a fourth world war yes <laughs> third world war is not yet ready but people are talking of the fourth world war so is there going to be a fourth world war between india and pakistan yes so instead of hearing about such useless rubbish waste garbage of this material world we can we can hear our own recording yes we can do that or we can search in youtube if we have recording of uh, the important shlokas from the gita but even if it is not there no problem we can do it ourselves yes we can take uh, we can take out in a weekend we can take out one hour two hour and then we can start the recording on yes in our iphone x <laughs> i will do with my nexus two year old phone it's good enough till now so i'll do with that and then when we are going outside we can always keep hearing that yes and then immediately whenever there's something which disturbs our mind which we see outside we can remember some shloka so that will uh, because the because you may not remember sc- scriptural concepts but you will remember shlokas very fast yes it's like missile cut it will go go like that so and this is for our personal application but even when you are spreading knowledge you when you are preaching then it is very good to quote the references yes so for example i always keep saying oh my guru said like this oh krishna says like this in the shrimad bhagavatam it is said so then people understand that oh he is not concocting or uh, making things of his own he is directly speaking from the scriptures and that is when people gain trust in you and it it is not about me or you or anybody else but in general i am saying it it is not good to concoct things ourselves so everything is there in the scriptures we do not have to go anywhere else we do not have to read any other book it is not required reading anything else is simply a waste of time if you are serious in your spiritual life okay if you are just having a good time here then you can anyways do whatever you want but i am talking of those people who are serious yes who are serious in their spiritual life in their spiritual journey for them nothing else is required just the scriptures alone is enough yes nothing else at all is required everything is there sacrifice relationships money discipline whatever you want in life everything is there in the scriptures we don't have to go anywhere else. so when we are going to preach outside then people may ask us sometimes oh you said like this 
where is it mentioned <laughs> so then you can directly say oh yes this is the shloka where, where it is mentioned we should be like a lawyer we should have a gun thak, 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 thak. <laughs> i know some of my senior god brothers they are like this oh krishna says in 2.38 and then he says in 3.16 also he says in 12.22 and i'm like okay <laughs> And the easiest solution to learn and to get acquainted with shlokas is stay with somebody who is like that. All right. So if you have a center where there are people uh, doing spiritual practices and you go there and you know somebody who is speaking shlokas like missiles. Yes. It's like one after the other he's going on shooting you. Yes. He or she. <laughs> then you can always go and ask the person because everybody will have, have their personal tricks, techniques and how to read and how to learn and how to memorize yes so this these are some of the small small techniques which i shared from my insignificant experience and from my uh, little so called knowledge which i had developed from my personal behavior and habits and knowledge from <laughs> the divine gurus and my god brother so this is what i wanted to say and i will make more videos on this topic so there you go how to read why to read how to memorize how to learn the shlokas all right so i wish you watch this video two or three times then you will understand more how to do all these things okay and let's end it with the first shloka of the shrimad bhagavatam janma adhyasa yato anvaya no it's time crossed okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye see you tata <laughs>